Luke chapter 3, verse 1 to 18. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea, Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and the region of Trachonitis and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, while Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And then he said to the multitude that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abram as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abram from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. And therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And so the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Then tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Oh, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than is appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. Now as the people were in expectation, and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And with many other exhortations he preached to the people. So far the reading from God's holy word. I'd like to direct your attention particularly to Luke chapter 3 verse 3 where it says concerning John the Baptist, and he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christmas season is one of peace, of joy, of goodwill to men. It is the season in which to rejoice and in which to be happy. And indeed, it's appropriate that if the angels could burst into a song of joy at the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving glory to God in the highest, then we, when we remember Christ's birth, should be doing the same. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is indeed a most wonderful event, and therefore, I do believe it is appropriate that we remember this event and that we also thank and praise God for the sending of His Son, Jesus Christ. But there is one thing which we must think about and seriously consider as we go into what we call the, the Christmas season. And that is why our Lord Jesus Christ came to be born in the first place. What He came to do. You see... We cannot think of a little baby Jesus in a manger without reflecting on our Lord Jesus Christ hanging from a cross. Yeah, this was what Mary and Joseph were also reminded of when they went to bring the Lord Jesus into the, uh, the temple uh, at the time of dedication. This is also what we must remember as well. And in that sense, it's, it's most appropriate that shortly before the celebration of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, we also celebrate the Lord's Supper. 
Because when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, and when we eat the bread and we drink from the cup, then we will receive Christ for who He really is. He's the Son of God. He's the one who has come to take away our sins and to restore us to fellowship with the Father. But just before our Lord was born, there was another miraculous birth, the birth of John the Baptist. He was the one whom the Lord had appointed to prepare the way for the coming Christ and to preach a baptism of repentance for the remission or the taking away of sin. Now, in the days that John the Baptist came to preach the people of Israel, the, the people of Israel were for the main part very religious. Almost everyone went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Uh, the temple did a brisk trade in selling pigeons and so forth and in changing money. Being children of Abram and members of the covenant community was very important for the Israelite. It really made up his identity. Uh, much of the talk or so would, would have revolved around the coming of the Messiah. But at the same time, the people of Israel, in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was born, the people of Israel did not as a whole understand the need for such a Messiah, the need for the Christ to come. Yes, some did, but not all. Some Jews, and you can also understand this and see this as you look at how our Lord Jesus Christ was received, some Jews were looking forward to a Savior who was going to deliver them from the Romans so that they might achieve freedom here on earth. They were looking back to the great days of David and of Solomon where the, where the enemy was defeated and where the, the, the kingdom of Israel expanded. They were hoping that this Messiah would do the same thing. And so you would have this political nation of Israel which was to be be uh, a, a large nation and that would be what the Messiah would do and then he would be reigning from Jerusalem over the people. Others, other Jews in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ had given up on all sorts of things like that. They would considered that there was a lot of ungodliness. They also felt that if they were to remain in an ungodly sort of an environment also in the nation of Israel, uh, they would also be tempted by that and they would drift further away from God. And so as a result, they, uh, they didn't um, go in this sort of way, but they went down into the wilderness. And going into the wilderness, they um, also then tried to have some sort of a commune where they would be uh, received by the Lord, they thought, because of their perfection, because of their godliness, because of their holiness. And so you had these different ideas and these different things going on in the time when our Lord Jesus Christ was to come. But what I'd like you to realize then is that externally, uh, many people were religious. Externally, many people even spoke about the Messiah. And they waited for what the Bible calls the consolation of Israel, the one, the great comforter who is to come. But inside their hearts, very few people were ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 400 years earlier, you had uh, the prophet Malachi who had prophesied, and he was really the last of the prophets. So there have been 400 years of where we don't have, uh, a, a, an addition to the Bible here, where we don't have a prophet of the Lord given the words Lord. But at that time, uh, Malachi had said that Elijah would come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And in some ways, the people of Israel had been anticipating the coming of this Elijah. But in reality and in practice, Daily life had dulled their expectations, and so they failed to see the urgency of his coming. As in the days of Noah, it was a time of eating and drinking, of marriage, and of giving in marriage. And so, see, this is the context when, when out, of, out of the wilderness, this, this man comes in, in Luke chapter 3, this man who's dressed in a rough and simple coat of camel's hair, who normally ate the, the food of the wilderness, locusts, wild honey, 
He's dressed like Elijah. And just as Elijah suddenly appeared in the court of King Ahab and, and gave him a word of judgment, so John suddenly appears from the wilderness and he calls the people to repent. He calls them to seek the forgiveness of sins. He calls them to get ready for the Messiah. And he commands them, he says, well, you need to prepare the way of the Lord. No, he, he is told to prepare the way of the Lord and to, to make his path straight. This is what we have here in, uh, in Luke chapter 3, verse 4. It says in verse 3, And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, this is from Isaiah chapter 40, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now, when, when Luke actually refers to Isaiah chapter 40 here, he's going back to a prophecy from the Old Testament. A prophecy in the Old Testament uh, where the people of Israel were in fact promised that one day they would be taken out of exile, out of Babylon and back into the promised land, back into the land of Israel. They were told that liberation was going to come and so God would once more comfort his people. But now Luke informs us that this prophecy ultimately was pointing to that great day, that day in which the Messiah would come, and so there would be full liberation through him. And now uh, John the Baptist is going about. He is that voice crying in the wilderness. He is the one who is preparing the way of the Lord, and he is doing this by calling people to get ready for the coming Messiah. He's telling them to repent. And he's pointing out to them their sin. He's pointing out that you are indeed sinful and you need to return to Christ in repentance. Now this was a message that had to be given. John the Baptist came to Israel at a time when the people were not yet ready to receive the Christ. They did not feel that they needed a Savior to take away their sins. They did not understand the, the reason for Christmas. And so the Lord sent John ahead of Jesus as a herald before the king preparing the way. And with his message of repentance, John the Baptist taught that for the gospel to have any meaning in our lives, we must first understand the need for the birth of Jesus, the need for a Savior. And that means that we need to know our sin. We need to know our sinful nature. We need to admit that we are sinners. We need to turn away from our crooked ways. We need to seek a new beginning. And we need to see Christ, not just the one who came to perform miracles, not just the one to give wise teachings, but we need to see our Lord Jesus Christ as the one who came to take away our sin. He came to set us on the right path and to restore us to fellowship with God. And you need to get that. Failure to understand this is a fail, failure to understand the meaning of the birth of Christ. In Luke chapter 3, we read that John the Baptist was called to prepare the way of the Lord and to make his path straight. The paths here refer to our hearts and our lives. Our hearts and our lives must be focused on the right direction so that we understand the need for a Savior and we are ready to receive the salvation that the Lord had come to bring. And so, when we celebrate Christmas, the coming of Christ into this world, although we remember that little baby in the manger, we need to rejoice in his birth with our eyes on the cross. That's the only way that straight paths will be made for our feet and they will be ready to receive the Savior and the salvation that he came to bring. When John preached in the wilderness and called the people of Israel to repent, they all came to meet him. By his dress, by his diet, by his message, he challenged them and he cut through the smoke screen of their daily lives and he pointed to this true state in their hearts and he called them to repent and he called them to believe and he called them to beware of the wrath that was to come. He, he said the axe is at the root of the tree. 
he says, look to the coming king. Have your sins washed away. But if you fail to do this, judgment is coming. And the blessing is that many were convicted of their sins. And as a sign that they needed to be cleansed and their sins forgiven. And as a sign that they were ready and waiting with their hearts prepared to receive the coming king. They were baptized. Actually, this is not quite the same as our baptism today. The Jews were already a part of the covenant community. It's not as though they were, became a part of the church community, the community of Israel, through their baptism. So there is a difference to the, the depth and the meaning of baptism today. But their baptism was a sign that they were waiting for a Savior who would redeem them from their sins and who would baptize them, them not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. And so that baptism of John also calls us to turn to the Lord. For us too, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ is an awareness of our sin and of the forgiveness that Christ came to give. We must understand our need for a Savior. We must meet our Savior with repentance, with sorrow for sin, with a desire to change our ways. We need to see that Christ came not simply to perform miracles or to give wise teaching, but he came to save us from our sin. And so we look not just at the manger this Christmas, but we look at the manger remembering the cross. We will celebrate the coming of Christ in the spirit of repentance from sin, turning to Christ and receiving forgiveness in him. And that's why it's a beautiful thing to celebrate the Lord's Supper this morning. We anticipate the celebration of the birth of Christ in three weeks' time. But we celebrate Christmas in the shadow of the cross. We celebrate Christmas to rejoice in the wonder of the Son of God being born as man to take away our sin. At Christmas, there is born for us a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen.